I'm going to be talking to Rory Sullivan, who's the North American CEO for Moltex. And viewers will remember the interview I did with Simon Newton from Moltex about their design, their waste reactor that'll burn can spent can-do fuel. So a lot of interest in that amongst our viewers. And uh, the uh, Moltex recently went through the pre-licensing vendor design review of their technology. And we're going to ask Rory about that. So welcome to the interview, Rory. Hello, great to be here. Now, what is the vendor uh, pre-licensing vendor design review? And why is it important uh, you know, for, for the Moltex uh, proposal? So nuclear power is a, is a very heavily regulated industry. In Canada, it's regulated by the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, CNSC. What's unusual about the Canadian regime is that they have a process to engage with reactor designers at an early stage in the design process. So this is one of the reasons that we were actually pulled to Canada in the first place, because they have this innovative system. And this, this process is called the Vendor Design Review, or VDR, and it really gives us feedback on the design as we go through the process. It also gives confidence to our stakeholders, our investors, that what we're saying is credible and we're going in the right direction. Historically, designers have spent huge amounts of money getting to the point where they're about to start construction. Then they feed all the information to regulators. And, and if there's issues, then it's, it's very expensive to make the changes. So we really appreciate this opportunity to get this feedback at the early stage. So how does this demonstrate that Moltex's technology is progressing? So the, the process is three phases. It's phase one where you really get um, early feedback, high level feedback and, and spot the big, big issues. You go into phase two and that's where you really get into a lot of the full details. That's where you really you know, lift under uh, every cover. And then phase three is if there's issues identified in phase two, you go into more detail. So we've just completed phase one. And this is uh, the lighter phase, but it's, we've still submitted over 50 documents. It's taken over 42 months and they look at 19 different focus areas. So um, it might be still high level, but there's a lot of detail to go into uh, in this. So it's been valuable to us to give feedback uh, on the design and it's actually led to some design improvements over the period that we're now integrating into our future design configuration for the next phase. One of the questions I had uh, that I didn't ask Simon and that is uh, how your technology differs uh, from you know previous nuclear reactor designs that we've that we've seen that have been up and running for you know 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever years. And, uh, and I guess, given the Canadian context, different from the, uh, the can-do technology. Yeah, so with our reactor, there's really one fundamental difference, and that is with the fuel itself. So typically, uh, almost every reactor in operation today, commercial operation, they use solid fuel, so solid little pellets of uranium. What we're looking at doing is a very innovative approach of using a liquid fuel. And so with a liquid fuel, the concept of a nuclear meltdown doesn't really apply because we've already at liquid state. So we don't, and, and this operates at atmospheric pressure. So there's no pressure for any release. So with these innovations, that's why we can use existing nuclear waste or spent can-do fuel convert it to a form that's that's suitable in this liquid salt actually and then we can convert that waste to clean energy a lot of the technology and the fundamentals are obviously still just building and iterating from the existing plant the whole plant is is not revolutionary it's really just the fuel and that enables the simplicity throughout the plant but we're building on decades of existing um existing commercial commercial data and experimental data this is not the first liquid fuel reactor to be to be developed there was experimental ones in the states in the 60s and 70s uh, Rory, uh, so what's the next step for Moltex now? So the next step is take all the learning from the phase one of this regulatory process we've just completed. And we're going to be spending time absorbing that, making sure all of those lessons learned are incorporated as we move forward to phase two. And so we're deep in the planning phases of that, getting the design ready and more advanced so we can we can take it through that, that process. In parallel, 
we're building our relationships with our customers, New Brunswick Power, and then hopefully Ontario Power Generation in the future, who are already uh, financially supporting some of the initiatives and, uh, and, and working towards getting the first project built at, at, at New, in New Brunswick. There's also a lot of big experiments that need to happen. So there isn't new science, but there is major experiments to do to really validate that absolutely everything works exactly as planned and will operate safely in the first commercial plant. In addition, we are doing fundraising. So we've um, recently uh, announced a couple of months ago some significant finance from the federal government that was $50 million, which is great to see the support. Um, but we're also raising private capital in parallel, which will be ongoing over the years to come. And we're just starting a funding round at the moment. Well, Rory, thank you very much for your insights. Really appreciate this and uh, good luck with the next step. Thank you. Have a great day.